Philadelphia is freaking wild. Um, the driving there is so aggressive. And if you get in an accident, nobody cares at all. There are literally no rules there when it comes to what you do with your car. Good. You can park on the sidewalk. You can park in the median. You can park in front of a police officer and they do not care. It's for the gun tuber guys who literally can't show half the content that they used to make anymore. You can't retroactively hit people for something that wasn't offensive or bad or whatever at the time that they originally uploaded it. Our one and only goal was to eat our way across Philadelphia. And I feel like we actively were very successful in expanding our waistline. As soon as I got home, I took the longest, hottest shower to get Philadelphia out of my pores. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I'm your host, Andrew. This is Nona, who's back from her not recording for a week by the time you guys see this. A week? How much did you do without me? You're not in... Oh, yeah, you are on Monday's episode. Because that was the episode with Luke. So, never mind. Rude. But it'll be a week since the last time they saw you in an episode. Rude. Because they won't see you. They didn't see you yesterday. I only, I only went to Philadelphia. It wasn't that far. Yeah, but I'm saying they're, they're not going to see you in what aired yesterday. They're not going to see you in what aired tomorrow at the time we're recording this. Okay. He so, obviously did a lot without me, guys. No. It was Cash and I and then Joe and I. So there's a small person here one time and then there's a normal sized person here one time. Cash was so happy, by the way. Did he tell you that? No. He made me put it on on the way to dentist appointments. Okay. And he had to listen to himself talk. And he was just grinning in the back of the suburban, just like, <laughs> like, what did he say? Is he like, do did, did you think he did good? Did yeah. He think he did bad? Yeah. He was so proud of himself. Well, were you proud of him? Yeah. I was proud of him. He's, he can do the, um, like off screen banter commentary stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I actually just saw, I knew that, his name's Jake, the attorney guy that part owner of Corridor. He's been in Texas. He was doing stuff with Black Rifle, and now uh, I guess he's part of behind f either funding or developing or whatever the Pepperbox app that all the gun tubers made. Okay. <laughs> so yet again, another like niche streaming service like nebula and oh all those okay ones. gotcha gotcha but it's for the gun tuber guys who literally can't show half the content that they used to make anymore okay here's okay youtube here's something that needs to be like addressed across the board you can't retroactively hit people for something that wasn't offensive or bad or whatever at the time that they originally uploaded it because they, they do that. They they goes back and it demonetizes people for old videos for things that they said or did or showed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they have to like pull their old content down. Yeah, that's wild. So playing the YouTube game is crazy. Recently, Linus Tech Tips videos from two to five years ago have been trending on my like for you feed, if you okay. want to call it that. Okay. And it's a lot of it. I, I would say one out of every three or four of the videos I've never actually even seen. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I'm not seeing like a trend or rhyme or reason why those specific pieces of content are coming back. I have no idea. Because most of I'm it, barely following this conversation. I'm still okay, so, so anyways, exhausted Jake. from my trip. <laughs> Jake, so Jake, <laughs> um, they were, I was watching Donuts video yesterday is like vlog, he has two channels. Mm -hmm. I was watching his vlog channel and he, they were talking about some behind the scenes stuff from a cooking show that they're putting up on Pepper Box that he's the, like he's cooking. Okay. I actually think it's called Let Him Cook. Okay. <laughs> so, or something, something along those lines. 
So I'm sure that was to that's a current slang term, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Every time I, I like open barely. Twitter, somebody's saying that about Sharon Moore. Who's that? Michigan's head coach. Okay. Like anytime they Michigan lands a new recruit for like next year or the following mm-hmm. year, that's what people they'll they'll retweet it and they say let them cook. Okay. So Which by the way, are you so excited that yeah. I surprised you with oh, Michigan the, tickets? Uh, I don't know what her actual position is called. We'll call her secretary at the eye doctor. She saw my hoodie and she's like, Oh, are you from there? And yeah. I said, Stay on in Indiana yeah. and she was like, oh, I'm from Coloma. My my sister went to Michigan State, so I'm going to have to say, go green. I was like, no. <laughs> well, yeah. you will be so perturbed then. I was helping an Ohio State fan today. Why? Um, he had to come into the office, and I had to itemize everything in his entire house because his house flooded a couple weeks ago, and it was to expedite his claim. And I Hold saw I was looking through the pictures while I was itemizing, which I got up to on. almost eighty thousand dollars in stuff. Let's, Hold on. Hold let's on. come back to this. Let's come and, back to this. And I saw an Ohio State chair in his garage, and I was like, "Bless your heart." I'm so sorry for your loss. All right, let's come back to this. Later. And he no, said no, because we're going to be talking about. He said what? We're going to be talking about said, insurance stuff in a minute. My Hold husband on. is a Michigan fan, and he just. Oh, please don't hold this against me. Was the first thing that came out right. of his mouth. So bring bring this back up <laughs> later in in a, in, a, in a few minutes. Um, so, anyways, going back to Jake. <sighs> so he they were showing something behind the scenes from the podcast from um, unsubscribe mm-hmm. or no, maybe I was watching it. So no, it was behind the scenes, something, I don't know. And he was like sitting on the couch, you know, in the background, mm-hmm. like laughing about something they were talking about something, the fat electrician. Oh, it was a, a, a metal thing. <laughs> it's a whole story, whatever. But so he was off camera. So I guess he's helping produce it, which is cool. He, is a producer. I don't know what his expertise is in like cinema, cinematography, but okay. I mean, he's been involved with Corridor for, I guess, since the beginning, but he's an attorney. So I don't know what the guy actually really does. I think he just runs the business. I think he's like a Ken kind of. Okay. Yeah. But younger. It's not a slide okay. against you, Ken. You're just not young. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So that's. That could be Cash's position. Offset, back there, asking questions, chiming in. That's what Chloe wants to do. I told them to do that when we set up this set uh, two weeks ago or whenever whenever I had them help me set it up. Mm -hmm. And then they all scattered to the wind. So... I, I guess. I don't know. that They were like, yeah, I want to do it. And I was like, okay. Then we went to get started recording and then they all disappeared and didn't. Chloe is actively taking classes on an app that I helped her download to... I saw her doing some stuff. Yeah. I she told really her, wants to I, know all the behind-the-scenes stuff. I told her that um, Adobe, I believe, it might, it might not still be, mm-hmm. but a lot of these software companies, because they want to get you while you're in school, mm-hmm. so they offer with your school email, right, right. they offer you their software service mm-hmm. for free. Right. So I, she was like, well, I don't think I want to use Canva or this or that or whatever. I want to use like Adobe. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. so go see if you can register with right. your school email. We can't do anything about it because we don't have access to like the school. I mean, obviously you can log into it, but I'm saying like, there's not like a, a parental step where we would have to, you see what I'm saying? Okay. Anyways. Let's talk about me going to Philadelphia hold on, for a minute. We gotta, we have to finish this. <sighs> yeah, you're going off. Carry on, then. You're you on. you're the one who's going on a tangent. No, we were talking about uh, Jake and all this other stuff. No, we were talking about your insurance stuff, and you, that's supposed to be later in the you episode. You went on a tangent. I'm trying to get us back on track. I thought we were talking about this guy. That is after. Sure. 
I, I, I already laid it out for you. We were going to talk about me going to Philadelphia and then we were going to talk about crazy pants. Okay. And then you went on a tangent and you haven't let me get to Philadelphia at all. Okay. Philadelphia. You flew in an airplane. Chloe's first time in a plane. But you spent 10 Come minutes talk. talking Come about talk. a tangent and you haven't let us go anywhere. No, because you, no, you jumped in with your tangent. Come on. Chloe, Chloe flew on a plane for the first time, got to ride first class. Was it actually first class? Or was it yeah. like business? No, I'm saying like the seats. Was it like business? What do they call it? So you have Well, like- they were super small planes, so there's no real feeling about first class, I guess. But can I tell the story? Yeah. Okay. Am I allowed to talk on this yeah. at all? Yeah. Okay, cool. We're waiting. S- s- uh- Okay, now I get to actually talk. Mm-hmm. I'm just waiting for you to jump in again. Anyway, Hayes. So this past weekend, I got to take Chloe on her very first airplane trip, and we went to visit my sister in Philadelphia. Our one and only goal was to eat our way across Philadelphia, and I feel like we actively were very successful in expanding our waistlines and that was and you guys probably didn't eat the only food that philadelphia is known for no no no. it was just philly cheesesteak no no oh but we had the pretzels pretzels is what they're known for as well but correct we did oh and um sorry they call it water ice not italian ice and that was that's a that's a seasonal thing only so um that's like a summer a summer treat like Italian ice. You know what Italian ice is. Right. But but they call it water ice, but it wasn't an option. We were going to do that, but most places were closed down. Rita's was still open. Um, and we did stop. We did stop at Rita's, but Rita's is a chain. So it's not, it's not super local, but it's very, um, it's very Philadelphia to get a water ice and a pretzel and you eat it together. No, but no, we did not have a Philly cheese, Philly cheesesteak. Chloe is not interested. She doesn't like deli meats. It's um, not deli meat. Yeah, no, she 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 considered that. Uh, I tried explaining it to her. It's not deli. So meat. did Nicole, and I was like, "You like steak?" And she was not interested at all. It was too. Oh, it's because of the American cheese. American cheese is not what's traditionally put on it. Um, it's like provolone. Mm, yeah. Search it real quick. Um, it's like either cheese whiz is one way to get it. What? Cheese whiz is one way to get it or American cheese. American provolone and cheese whiz. Um, Ameri- but provolone is. American is what Nicole said is most common to go on it. Um, so she was not interested. It's the. Provolone is the original cheese used on a Philly cheesesteak. Okay. I'm just, she, she wasn't, Nicole did not uh, successfully get Chloe to try a Philly cheesesteak. Anyways, so that was, that was no part of our goal. So again, you've gone off on a tangent about nothing, no. <laughs> not letting me tell my story. It's important information. It, that was not part of the story at all because that wasn't our goal. It's, it's important information for the audience. N- no, it's not. Yeah, it is. They wanted to know if you tried it. Nobody wanted to know yeah, if yeah, we there's tried people, the f- There's people in Philadelphia that are like, did she... It's like, if you go to Chicago, people are going to ask you if you eat deep dish. If you go to Detroit, they're going to ask you if you so eat anyways, Detroit style pizza. So anyways... So anyways... Philadelphia is freaking wild. Um, the driving there is so aggressive and if you get in an accident, nobody cares at all. And the most wild thing at all is people park in the middle of the road. I was just so mind boggled by that. Like, like right double in, parked? Or what do you mean? No, in the median. Like in the turn lane, in the median. People just line up and park there. I, I would have to say. It is so is wild Is this like Carolina to me. Beach Road kind of median? Like what kind yes. of median are we talking about? 
Yes. Whether it's downtown and the streets are yay narrow or if the streets are like double laned and yeah, it was wild to me. Are there no parking zones? Like is Um, it painted and signs and... um, There are literally no rules there. It is like the wild west. (laughs) Of, of vehicles. It literally, like, there are literally no rules there when it comes to what you do with your car. Good. You can park on the sidewalk. You can park in the median. You can park in front of a police officer, and they do not care. That was the other thing I noticed. The police officers are so passive there. They are security guards who just kind of putter around and they drive like Ford Explorers and Dodge Durangos painted all white. And then the badge is about this big on one door panel. And they literally look like security guards. They have no like show of force. It's just that like is the show of force. No, just, just being present is what show of force is, but they're not present at all. If you see them, they were present. Barely. I saw them in downtown, like downtown, downtown only. Okay. And that was it. The rest of the time, and my sister lives in the freaking hood. The rest of the time, not present at all. So we were in downtown uh, Saturday night and Sunday morning were the only two times that we went downtown. And those were the only two times that I saw police officers and they were just like parked and not doing anything. And it was just comical. I thought the whole thing was wild. It could be people undercover. Yeah, possibly. I mean, anything's of course possible. There were, there were literally no police officers in, um, Chestnut Hill, which is like with the richer area when we went there, uh, Friday to visit some friends. And, um, then we went to the suburbs on Saturday morning to King of Prussia and there were no police there either. And then my sister lives in the hood. There were no police there. And um, yeah, the only two times that I saw police were downtown Saturday night. They're busy. Dinner time. They were busy. Yeah. They were busy the entire trip. Calling riots and. No. No. And oh my God, the other crazy thing. Downtown Philly has like. Um, ATV and dirt bike gangs. It's comical. Like, you live in the freaking city. Why do you have an ATV? And ha- where do you park it? You can't park it on the road because somebody will steal it. But yeah, it was like eight o'clock at night, downtown Philly, and they were all like revving their engines and doing their dirt bike, ATVing, rallying, whatever, and weaving in and out of traffic. And the police officers just, you know, waving and saying, hey, like, go do your thing, whatever. It was so wild to me. You can't catch them. No, it, they didn't care. Yeah, because the whole, they can't catch them. The whole thing, it, like, it's a known thing there. But I want to know, where do they park their ATVs if they live in the freaking city? There are Wherever. no garages. Wherever. There are no garages. I've seen people all over the world put their motorcycles and stuff in their house. That's wild to me. I'm just not a city person. I just want to know, like, where does everybody fit? I'm not a city person. Yeah, I've literally seen people, like, bring their motorcycle. And then as soon as I got home, I took the longest, hottest shower to get Philadelphia out of my pores. I am not a city person <coughs> at all. I was so happy to be home. <laughs> Philadelphia has 6,000 sworn police officers currently. Okay, well... It's the fourth largest department in the U.S. They um, are like the number one most passive police. (laughs) Well, there's a lot of, so there are rules. I don't know if we ever talked about this on here, but like pursuit rules and things like that. Mm -hmm. So if your pursuit of somebody will potentially put other people at risk, they let them go. Yeah, no, I understand. And 
you're not going to catch somebody on a dirt bike or four wheeler because they're more maneuverable. They can go up alleys, and I, obviously, I'm yeah, just speculating the, on what the, the location looks like. The whole thing was like, freaking but, wild to me. It was the wild, wild west of cities. It was so weird. I've seen a video of a guy, or I'm assuming it's a guy. I don't know. They didn't catch him in a uh, Hellcat driving on the highway doing over 200 miles an hour, mm-hmm. and the helicopter couldn't keep up with him, so they just called off the pursuit entirely. <laughs> um, yeah. That's wild. But, I mean, there's there's a cutoff speed typically because you, you – I don't have you seen the video of the cop that pitted – it just happened recently. They pitted somebody and they went down, like the car went into a ditch and the officer's vehicle got tangled in somehow and followed mm-hmm. him in the ditch. And the officer's car ended up ramping over the suspect's car and flipping over on top of the suspect's car. Mm-mm. Yeah. Nope. So stuff like that happens at, at high speeds. If, if you're somewhere where there's no other traffic, then mm-hmm. that's fine. But as soon as you introduce other traffic in... You just can't do that anymore. You just let them go. You have their license plate. Right. You probably know who, where they live by then. Mm-hmm. Just we'll catch you later catch with you later. additional charges. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyways, whatever. Uh, it was nice taking Chloe out of town. It was nice experiencing her first flight. It was nice having somewhat uh, easy travel and staying with relatives Um, But it was even more nice to come home. I am a small town girl. I am a a beach bum. It's not a small town. I do not do cities. I am not a city girl at all. So being home is where I am happy to be. (laughs) This is effectively, traffic wise, this is effectively a small city. Um, yeah, it, don't even bother complaining about the traffic until you go up to Philly because that I've been was in way worse traffic than Philly. Insane. But I've been in, I've driven in traffic in basically all of the worst cities in the world. Okay. So and stop Wilmington, complaining about Wilmington traffic. Wilmington is the worst. No. Yeah. I experienced terrible. Wilmington terrible. is worse than Seoul. Oh my God. And the potholes. Holy crap. I thought South Carolina roads were terrible. No, Philadelphia roads are horrible. Well, the only reason that you didn't experience it in Indiana is because there was ice. <laughs> the roads were frozen over. Yeah. Crazy. You Wild. Should see, you should see when like the roads buckle and stuff. But I did treat myself to something special while I was up there. I got myself my very first Gucci I thought it was Louis Vuitton. No. See, he doesn't know anything. You sent me pictures of stuff. Yes. I sent you a picture of me wearing it in the Gucci store, and it clearly has a Gucci emblem but on you it. Said, but you said we already left there. I didn't know that you went back. <sighs> You're exhausting. That's, and I literally, you know, right. okay, I literally intentionally picked out the most inexpensive item in the store and he still thought the price was asinine, $1,100. Okay, so I know that you guys think $1,100 is a lot of money, but $1,100 for a Gucci They're gonna start crossbody. They're going to start commenting touch. <laughs> for a Gucci crossbody is actually really affordable. I, I showed you a picture later after that one, and I said, guess how much these are? And then one was like 5,000, one was like 3,500 or something like that. And I was just trying to compare and show you that what but I none of, was so affordable. None of, that, none of that makes any sense though. What, what value do you get out of it? Um, first of all, they appreciate with, val- with time. And if you take care of them, you can resell them. And I believe in quality over quantity. I only have two purses. I have a Prada and I have now a Gucci and it's very petite. It's very little. It can fit my phone and a card and my keys and that's it. And it's perfect for just that's it. Okay. (laughs) And he made me feel like crap about it. I didn't do anything. You did. No. Yeah. No. So I kind of feel like 
I need vindication on that one. Okay. How many, how many Michigan hoodies do you have? Think right now in your closet, how many Michigan hoodies that do you have? Probably four. Okay. And of those four, how many do you wear still? All of them. I think you only wear two of them. No, because I just got the new two. The, this one's a new one, and the other one that's similar to this that you got last year are the two that I'm thinking of. And I still wear the black one. What black one? The the subdued one that's all black. It has the Michigan M. I don't know the it's last time camo. that I've seen you wear that. I that's just, why. I just wore it the other day, the first cold day before I got these. I haven't worn the other one like this at all this year. Hmm. Or the season. Okay. And then how much do you think you've spent per hoodie? Uh, 40, $45. I don't believe that for a second. It's they're always on the site. It's called fanatics. They're all, always on sale. Like not, it's not actually always on sale. It's one of those things where it's oh countdown. It's they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're listed at like $70. And I, okay, I that's paid, what, I pay 40, 45. Mm, the hockey okay. sweater one was the most expensive. That was 51. When, when have you worn that one? Two days ago. Mm. Yeah, I just wore it. Mm. Ask, you weren't here. Ask the kids. Okay. I was in Philadelphia. So you're right. I wouldn't know what you were wearing. I wore it to the football. No, I wore this to the football game. I wore the other one to practice on Tuesday. Yesterday. <sighs> All right. Well, the point being, I believe in quality over quantity. Yeah. And how often do I buy them? You buy like two a year? No. I bought the one like this last year. I bought two this year. The other one I bought two years ago. And that's all I have. You buy other things too, though. Not clothing. Yeah, like from Black Rifle and Bunker Branding and... And how long does most of that last me? Years. N n no, not very long. Years. You you stretch them out and all the no, words no, come, shirts, come off. One of my shirts are stretched out. The only shirt that had the um, print, whatever you want to call it, the design came off were Ranger Up shirts. Mm. It okay. was that one, that like American flag one. And it completely faded with a couple washes and they sent me a replacement and then we did the same thing. Mm -hmm. But so anyways, talking about bunker branding stuff real quick and the oh. shirts, they just posted a video about how they were getting new direct garment printers. And so mm -hmm. I immediately one commented, will it, will you be able to ship things faster than three weeks now? And did they respond? I don't know. I don't get notifications if they did. So I don't get notifications for anything on YouTube because I don't care what people... I want to put out my comment and that's the end of the interaction. <laughs> okay. I might have a lot of responses on stuff, but I don't know. Well, that leads us to the next thing. While I was in the airplane coming back to Wilmington, apparently some craziness was going down with a Ravens fan. Yeah. What was after? Yeah, after the game. Was it Sunday? Yes. Hmm. Oh my God. Sunday is NFL day. Well, they like to try and pretend like they can play on other Sunday days. Sunday is yeah. NFL day. And a Ravens fan was going crazy. And so Andrew did some digging on this guy. And apparently he is a millionaire son, billionaire son. They said they didn't give an exact number. They said okay. he's loaded. Basically, daddy is rich yeah. and has been spoon feeding this boy since he was. What? Reddit is undefeated. This is fucking awesome. This is a Reddit thread about it. And I was scrolling down. Okay. So, the so first, let's get into it. The first comment was, I don't lose. And that's what he kept saying. Okay. I don't lose. Yeah. While he was punching the guy. Yeah. So he actually hit two different people. There were two guys. And it was like his friend recording him yeah. going around yeah. hitting and people. Apparently, apparently the video he posted on Instagram and his friends like thinking he's going to win some sort of award for his narration or something. That's like, I haven't actually seen it on Instagram and I didn't really listen to it. Okay. I watched it with the audio off as I watch everything with audio off. 
Okay. And so I didn't hear anything that he said, but apparently the, the guy's super proud of recording it. <laughs> so I'm sure there's probably charges coming for him too because they're always... He's at the very like least complicit. Um, I don't know. They, they'll figure something out, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, always, there's always some way to make some law like that work, even if it's just a scare tactic and it's going to get dropped. Mm. Just... All right, dive into it. So somebody quoted Friday. Okay. How'd you get fired on your day off? Because <laughs> he was an insurance agent, correct? Yeah. Yep. I've never heard of the... And con- the first rule of crime is don't... Do crime. Oh, That's- I was going to say, don't video it <laughs> and post it on your social media for everybody to track you down. So yeah, somebody... They're looking for it. Yep. So that's the thing with facial recognition these days. And that's Mm -hmm. going to get even worse now with that project that those Harvard kids did. What project? They did an experiment. They're not releasing anything, but it's, I mean, it's all freely available stuff. Anybody could do this if they're smart enough and have the time to do it. They took the meta Ray-Ban glasses. Okay. And, uh, utilized a couple of different social media APIs and Mm -hmm. some software that they wrote and they walked around in public wearing them and it would scan your face Mm -hmm. and then it would find you on social media, get your name, all of your known associates, your spouses. Yeah. So they would, they were walking up to people, people they've never met before. Like they knew them. Yeah. Like I look at you and I get your, I get your face from Google or social media or whatever. And I walk up to you and say, Hey, Nona, I haven't seen you forever. Remember that thing? And, yeah, and in the background, because they actually have um, like uh, what are they called the bone conduction speakers in them? Okay. So like their friends are like giving them additional feedback. Like, mm. oh, they made a public post about this. Oh, remember that? Remember that meeting and that guy did that crazy thing? Like creepy. Yeah. And this is this is the major problem specifically with children on social media. Right. Absolutely. Because now, oh, hey kid Mm -hmm. mom sent me to pick you up and now they know your name they know where you live Mm -hmm. they know who your parents are oh she had a late thing at work and that's how i knew how to come pick you up where's the other two or three or whatever nope yeah that's i mark my fucking words it's gonna be in the news within a year within 12 months guarantee it and that'll be exactly how the kid explains that it happened jot it down Got it down. I'm sure it's already happened, honestly. Probably, but the, either they're not going to say it because they're going to think, oh, well, we don't want other people to get the idea. Mm-hmm. Or the kid doesn't know how to explain it. Or the kidnapper isn't going to tell them. Right. So we'll see. Anyways, back to the guy. Yeah. So what's his name? Crazy Ravens Can guy. Stop. She needs to be locked up. Talking about the dog, by the way. No, he was definitely talking about me. No. Um. Damn it, Philly. Um. Uh, Ravens, yeah. not Philly. I can't see my keyboard. Ravens, my keys aren't lighting up. Assault. Let's see here. After they defeat the commander, he looks like such a douchebag. Yeah. The, even the way he walked. Mm-hmm. Did you watch the video? No, I didn't. The way he was I walking. I didn't need he to. He did the whole like. I have small pee pee energy. Yeah. And he walked up. So he hit the first guy. And then the other guy was like trying to duck. And then he like took him to the ground. And was like hitting him on the ground. And then stood up and walked. So that's after he walked away. This is like 10 seconds. Um, Have you ever heard of this firm before? Mari, Donnelly, and Parr? M- MDP? No. Maybe that's the... The, it was the, the parent company is who issued the statement. So like they're a, like a sub... The company that he worked for is like a sub-brand. I think this actually is the parent company because the company that he worked for was like two guys, two brothers' last name. It was really... It was a weird, long last name. Okay. Right. So that's why I was curious if... Yeah, so that's the first one he hit. This is the clip from the scene. He hits this guy and this guy is fucking KO'd. He drops and just 
hat Damn. falls off his head and everything, and then he fights this guy for a couple seconds. Okay, first of all, he got so lucky that none of his victims like cracked their head on a curb or something and actually died. Yeah. Like, uh, detectives have identified a possible suspect. It's not possible. <laughs> it's was, verified by all of the interwebs. He was identified on social media like within minutes. That's crazy. Um. They won't say his name. Why? I had his name because I had it. From yeah, because X. you said you went to his agency's website like and and that they had taken down the contact form yeah. so that nobody could call or email yep. the business. And that was on Monday that you said that. Yeah, that's wild. That already from Sunday night to Monday, they had the IT department take down the contact form. Not that that stops people from calling because you just do a quick Google and find out their phone number. Mm -hmm. Twitch Hunter what? Jack Callis is his name. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a douchebag name. Yep. Callis. Or Kalis. I don't know. C-A-L-I-S. Whatever. Either way. Yeah. So... So, yeah, what does Reddit have to say about this guy? Uh, led me down a rabbit hole regarding this guy sexually assaulted a student with special needs. What? And wore a racist Freddie Gray costume. And I think that's, uh, I have to pull that up because I, I vaguely know this story. Um, so, yeah, it's like a prison. Baltimore schools condemn racially insensitive inmate Freddie Gray costumes. And then the other one, yeah, so this is a, a guy that he went to high school with. So this happened on, was this already on Sunday or was it Monday? 14th was Monday? Yeah. This is a guy that he went to high school with. Um, he got kicked out of three different private schools. A notable moment was his expulsion from St. Paul's for putting his generals on a kid with special needs. He probably teabagged him. Yeah. Wow. What a... Dick. He says he's disgusting, but his father's absolutely loaded, super rich. Does not shock. Yep. That is literally on par for like every rich kid. This what was this uh Freddie Gray? I, f I know I've heard this story, but I don't know. Killing a Freddie Gray. I uh, was arrested by Baltimore Police Department for possession of a knife. While in police custody, Gray sustained fatal injuries and was taken to the R. Adams Cowley Shock Trauma Center. By uh, possession of blah, blah, blah. C spine injuries, pending investigation of the incident. Six, so the police killed him. Or somebody killed him in police custody, one of the two. Hmm. I swear I remember this feels like a familiar story, but it also feels like vaguely close enough to another story. It just it, it brings me back to the one that everybody should be proud of. The uh uh what's his name? Oh my gosh, I can see it in my head. Proud of the where he killed his kids, kidnapper. At the airport. Oh, the one you post on Father's Day? Yeah. Okay. I just, I can hear the cop. Why? Why? And I can't think of his name. Unsubscribe had the son on their podcast uh, a couple months ago. Okay. Yeah. Anyways, back to Raven's fan. Yep. So, yeah. It doesn't, I don't, it hasn't said if he's been arrested yet, though. Everybody just says that he's been fired, he's been fired, he's been fired. Um, hope he gets screwed over with assault charges. Uh, credit to the Ravens fan base for not supporting this idiot. Anyone know the Commanders fans? Are they okay? Yeah, nobody's talked about that. Nobody's been like, did they go to the hospital? Did they right. just get up and walk away? Like, how to go? Uh, I guess I've kind of been in a similar situation. When my buddy and I stopped that dude uh, in Auburn mm -hmm. a long time ago. I mean, that was really getting old really fast. It was 
14 years ago. Crazy. Don't do stupid. Yeah, what, Andrew, don't do stupid. I wonder what happened to that guy. I should have kept track of his name so I could look him up. Not like look him up to be friends with him, but like follow up the story. Uh, the Baltimore Police Department is involved. Uh, what is this all about? Looks like a screenshot of, is this TikTok? Is that what that is? I have no idea. I cannot see what's on your computer. It's your computer. Lamar Jackson, whose jersey he's wearing, the Ravens okay. quarterback, okay. liked the video. That's what the screenshot is. Liked? The video of the dude assaulting the Commanders fans. Oh, that's not good. No. <laughs> nope. That's the wrong move, Lamar. Yeah. I bet so, you Harbaugh is all over him. It's Jim Harbaugh's brother, John, is the head coach oh. of the Ravens. Whoops. <laughs> PR is going to put out a statement. So yeah, you can, you can tell just by his shoulders how he was walking, doing that stupid. So what else did you find on him? I thought we were doing a whole. It was just those other cases of him being kicked out of school that's and being it? arrested. I mean, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> okay. Where are we even at on time? 30, almost 40 minutes. So the the biggest thing that I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. is like, do you, would you lose your license? No, you lose your license if you do shady insurance shit, not if you are just a shitty human being. But so even felony charges, you wouldn't lose your license? Um, if you have felony charges, then you have to notify the state that you are licensed in. And then I guess they could determine from there. So, I mean, guess anything's possible, but. Are, you, do you, all the states have the same? I, I what, honestly what do don't know. Have, like, I, a board? Like, what is it? Yeah, I only know an NC law. So, um, a misdemeanor or a felony not pertaining to insurance related anything. Um, you just notify them. Um, I believe bankruptcy as well. You have to notify. Um, so that you don't extort your potential customers for your own gain to get out of bankruptcy. Well, well no, es essentially as long as you are fiscally responsible and you are still doing, uh, correct things on the insurance side, whether you've made poor decisions in other th ways, you should not lose your license. Now, obviously it's a case by case basis. Um, just being a shitty human being and going and punching somebody. Yes. Potentially the state that he's licensed in, it could revoke. Um, but I can't say for sure. Yeah. Well, it's just as fired, fired, fired. Yeah, that, that is on par, getting fired for being a shitty human being, but getting your license revoked because you're shitty, especially um, because no charges have. And he did that after winning. Yeah, that's, that's why. All of it, honestly, my guess is he was coked out of his brain, but um, I'm not excusing the behavior in any way. It just, again, it screams rich boy, Daddy cleans up all of my messes. That's, That's him. 2022 mugshot. Ew, is, he looks punchable. Oh my God, please use that as the picture between us and then just have like Raven's jerseys like going all around his face. Is, oh my God, he looks punchable. Resisting arrest is what the charges were in 2022. Resisting re arrest for what? For when he teabagged that poor kid? Like what? Well, 2022, if that's the mugshot, that's, he's not in high school there. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> Only on Tuesday, Callis did lose. Uh, Baltimore police spokesman told Daily Mail that no arrests have been made at this time, that they're still seeking the Callis's exact identity. The Callis's exact identity. Okay. Uh, detectives have, have identified a potential suspect in the incident, but need to identify and interview the victims, read an emailed message. Oh, read an emailed message from Baltimore police. 
Uh, as for the video, police say it was recorded on Sunday night along the 1000 block, blah, 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 by the stadium. Uh, anyone with information called police. I'm sure the police have stopped taking calls at this point. All of the internet is probably calling them. That's how that works. Yeah. Right. They're probably just, thank you for the call. Goodbye. Thank you for the call. Goodbye. So that the resisting arrest mugshot was 2022 in Florida. Oh God. Um, he went to Roanoke, played lacrosse at Roanoke college in Virginia. Um, I have zero sympathy for snooty rich kids who think that they are above the law, obviously. Yeah, I I guess it's... This is the guy, Jack Allison, today update. Um, Facing charges, laying in nearly a decade in prison all over a full game... Blah, blah, blah. This is just somebody speculating. Yeah, I and my speculation is Daddy's going to take care of it. Well, unless Baltimore wants to make an example out of him, and Daddy's going to do everything to make it go away. And so here's the thing, though: hmm. if he lives outside of Maryland, they won't let him leave the state. If he's arrested and arraigned. They'll, they'll probably just have to stay in jail until the, the trial or hearing or whatever he has because he'd be a flight risk. Anyways, speaking of flight risks, I just booked our flights to go see the Michigan game, Big Brother versus Little Brother on the 26th. Yep. Are you so excited, Andrew? Yeah. You don't seem excited? I surprised him with this. And you don't seem excited at all. I am excited. I got us fifth row Mm -hmm. seats. So if you guys happen to also be going to the game, shoot us a message. Let us know. Maybe we can meet up. Um, We're going to be there for a couple of days. And we're going to go to some wineries. And should we bring the equipment and do an episode up there or no? Possibly. I need to get a... What do you guys think? Should we do an episode up in Michigan? I was, that's why I went to, uh, what's that, Harbor Freight? Yeah. What about it? I went to Harbor Freight to uh, look at the knockoff version of Pelican cases that they have there because everybody raves about them. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, Harbor Freight is stupid cheap. Well, it was specifically because the knockoff Pelican cases that they sell people seem to prefer over Pelican cases. Oh, okay. That's amazing. Well, um, Here, one second, I'm going to pause this and back. We're almost done anyways. No, don't worry. No, <laughs> bear with us for the last couple of minutes. No, cause I had the question that I told you I needed to bring up from earlier in the episode about flooding, but yes, excited about the Michigan game. So Michigan beat Michigan state 49 to zero last year. Okay. What do you think? What is your prediction this year? It's a whole new team, um, whole new everything. So here's the problem. We have, so our our third string backup quarterback, who probably would have been the starter, but he had an injury at the beginning of the season, okay. is now playing. He's a sixth-year transfer or seventh-year transfer from IU. I'm sorry, but how can you be... Redshirt. ...on the field if you've been... In school for seven years, and at that point, you're like, what, 25? Yeah, I think he's 25 or 26, yeah. That's wild, playing against like (laughs) 18-year-olds. That's wild. Washington's quarterback, Michael Penix, last year, it was the same thing. They were actually, they played with each other at IU. Yeah. I'm sorry, but at 25, a combination. Please, please just leave school. No, it's (laughs) no, it's 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 basically it. It's a cheat code to getting your education for free and still propping up your potential future draft status. I'm just having a whole week of it's wild. That's wild. So it's yeah, all wild. I think it's, I think the, <laughs> you're allowed to play, I think you're allowed to play snaps in three games. Maybe it's only two. I don't even um, know what that means. Snaps? Snaps what? 
dress and play on the football field during a game during the regular season. Okay. It's either two or three games, one of the two. And if you don't play anymore, you can redshirt. So okay. you can. What's your prediction for the game? Hold on, I gotta finish telling the story. Oh, you're so exhausting. So he he redshirted. Okay. As I believe, as a true freshman, didn't play. Okay. That's a lot of freshmen do that when they're not good enough to really start. Okay. Or if the team is just really good, mm-hmm. you're just essentially a glorified backup that doesn't right. ever play. Right. Um, and then COVID. Right. That messed everybody up. Yeah. And then injuries again. So. Okay. Um. Yeah, is lo- if if Tuttle plays well, his name is Tuttle. That's his last name. Yeah. Oh, he's so cute. Jack, Jack Tuttle. Oh. So, assuming he plays well, mm-hmm. and the receivers play well, our running game should be crazy good. Okay. We have the two best running backs in the country. Okay. According to Andrew. No, according to everybody. According to Andrew. They're they're both in the race for the Heisman. Well, this is going to be my very first football game ever, guys. And it's a night game, and it's Michigan. So I like a sunny 85 all year round. That would be my ideal. I fully expect to be freezing my freaking ass off, wearing like seven layers. (laughs) Thank you. No, don't look up the weather. Please don't look up the weather, because then I'm going to regret my decision surprising you with this. (laughs) Okay, so let me be let me backtrack. I was really trying to get him a suite and it was $25,000 split between 20 people, but I could not get 20 people to commit. Well, I guess 18 other people to commit. The next 10 days are upper 60s and mid to low 70s. Okay, and then watch it pour rain <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not looking I'm not looking at the weather I'm just hoping for the best and expecting the worst well the farthest out the forecast goes says 67 is the high for that day and 40 for the low that again night. I'm hoping for the best but I'm expecting the worst I expect to come home with frostbite <laughs> No. <laughs> so I mean, you can get down to freezing. Plus, you're going to be surrounded by 110,000 people. They're not personally warming me up. I don't want people to be like it's, rubbing on me. It's warmer when you are when you have all those people around you. Whatever. It's not going to be as cold as you think. It's going to be cold, but okay. And especially if the game is a blowout, people are going to be up jumping around. Okay. Yeah, you're going to be standing the entire time. Yeah, I already know I'm going to be standing the whole time. Yeah. I'm going to be in comfy clothes. Don't worry. We're close to the student section, so you also might have stuff thrown at you. And Why would they throw stuff at me? Uh, beach balls and stuff like that. Oh, I thought you meant in a negative way. No, like, like t-shirts. F they, you. they throw t-shirts up into the crowd. Oh, be- okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, My first Michigan item. Yeah. I own no Michigan gear at all. And so, Jack Tuttle playing well Mm -hmm. means that their defense has to respect the passing game, which means the running game goes crazy. Okay. Both those things happen. The secondary on the defense needs to step up. Okay. Go ball. If, If Wink Martindale figures out how to call defensive plays... You should see what Wink, Wink looks like. He okay. looks like somebody whose name would be Wink. Oh, God. <laughs> <sighs> You're just making me judge everybody's mugshot slash mugshot. <laughs> oh, my God. There's two? There's a there's a radio DJ with the same name. And that's where he came from was Baltimore. He was under John Harbaugh. Okay. Yeah. So his name is actually Don. He goes by Wink. Yep. He's, uh... I'm pretty sure that's what Andrew's going to look like when he is 60 years old. No. No. Look up, not. Look up this Wink guy. I think that's what Andrew's going to look not. like. I don't know. His, de- oh. his dentures are denturing. Yeah. He's, uh... It's actually funny. I didn't realize that his first name was really Don, but 
uh, we had a defensive coordinator years ago named Don Brown, and they're calling him Don Brown 2.0, which is like an insult. Oh. <laughs> so it's funny to see his name is also Don. Okay. They're just, they're guys that were like overhyped. They are good at the NFL level. Okay. But they're not good at the college level. Okay. It doesn't, most coaches, it doesn't translate back and forth. Harbaugh is like the only one that's had success both in NFL and college. He played against his brother or coached against his brother. Mm -hmm. Well, he played the NFL too, but he coached against John Mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. He was the 49ers coach and the Ravens beat uh, Jim in the Super Bowl. And then Michigan played the playoffs the last three years in a row, won the national championship. He's literally the only coach. Saban tried and failed. Um, Several others. There's only been like two total ever that have been good at both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And it's weird that you have brothers that are both, you know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. So they're kind of, they kind of have this weird, like. Rivalry? Uh, well, not anymore because they're in the same division or same mm-hmm. conference. Um, but there, there's like when Harbaugh, when Jim was at Michigan, mm-hmm. they would literally like send each other coaching staff. Okay. Like guys, guys would want more money at Baltimore, but the NFL has salary cap rules and coaching you know, all those rules, stuff like that. Okay. But they didn't in college. Okay. So as long as the college is willing to want, sign a contract for whatever amount of money your assistant coach wants. So they literally had people going back and forth for the entire time Jim was at Michigan. Okay. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways. That's all for this episode yes. on this day. Thank um, you for tuning in and listening to my wild ride. <laughs> when, when this episode comes out, I'll update my uh, prediction because Michigan plays Illinois this weekend. And so... What day is this episode coming out? Monday. Oh, gotcha. So the, after the game. So I'll update my prediction. Based on how they played Yeah. Saturday. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Because I don't think Illinois is very good. I mean, they're, they've never been. I actually saw a statistic right before we close this out. So Michigan leads the series with Illinois like 75 to 22 or something like that. Okay. And Michigan has won 45 of the last 50 games against them. Most of them recently. So Illinois But has again, a, all new team, all new coach. Yeah. But they beat they beat. No matter what team. happens on Saturday, I still love you. What was that supposed to mean? That no matter what happens on Saturday, I still love you. And they say that men are not emotional, but I'm just not. look at the way they act about sports. Go ball. I'm not emotional. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. No. The most emotional. Nope. Goodbye. Go blue. <laughs>